Hey everyone, this is Bridget, and today we're going to be talking about Atlantis, the catastrophe wound, and the idea of this big event. Because to me, they're all very interwoven, and so I wanted to give you the download so that you can choose the most aligned timeline for who you want to be and your future Earth. So I wanted to get a bit into the idea of Atlantis and some of the things happening there so that we can learn from those things so we don't have to create them again. So I'll be talking about the big event later in this video, but I wanted to get into the collective consciousness and what's going on with it so we can see what's going on now. So the idea is, is when big groups, mass groups, have the same belief, the same thoughts, the same frequency, they can then manifest in this physical reality in a, an amazing way. Like there's more momentum to it. And so the idea is no matter if that's for the positive or for the negative, these momentums still stand. So in the times of Atlantis, there was this idea of the misuse of power. There was immense technology and actual very advanced um, you know, mental capacities and, and different actual spiritual development. But that was um, shadowed by the idea of the lower desires and lower chakras of power and greed and those kinds of frequencies that were going on. They could see and they knew that things were going to happen to Earth, manifest negatively on Earth if they didn't change this. So they, they tried to overcompensate for it and utilize the idea of pyramid technology and so that they could balance the Earth's energies so that no kind of like natural disaster type things would happen. But it didn't work. <laughs> and for them, they were overtaken by tsunamis and earthquakes and all kinds of destruction because of this collective current. So now kind of weaving into this idea of, of the big event. So for me, I'm really not into the idea of future predictions. And I want you to go check out my video on that subject to get more of the mass understanding of why. And the main reason is because the future is determined by the now. So this idea of something happening out, happening out there, no one really knows what's actually going to happen. All that it is is probabilities, and the probabilities are then backed up and fueled by momentum of collective agreements. And so if we agree to a certain thing to happen, then it is more likely to happen. But we have the free will in our own frequency and our own realities to determine the future that we want. We are going to get that reflection to whatever degree is based on our energy and these agreements. Now, understanding too that, especially in uh, Western countries such as United States, Europe, I'll throw Australia into this as well, is that we are reincarnates from Atlantis. And one of the things that we're working on, one of the reasons that these continents and countries are so messed up is because we're playing out those frequencies. We're deciding if we want to misuse power again or if we don't want to. And so being incarnate, especially in these countries, we're deciding that frequency. And so it's even more important for us to be really clean and clear and remember these times so that we don't recreate these things that we don't want. So one of the reasons that the future predictions is not my favorite thing is because one, again, it, you can lock on to that current that you might not be consciously in agreement with. You might not want it to happen. You might want it to happen, but is it for the good of the all? And is it actually something that's tried and true? So tuning into that. And then on the other side, it can also create complacency. So whatever, say, a big event might be, it might be a solar flare, it might be like mass destruction, you know, the end of the world, like Christian status style, whatever it is, it can also create this idea of complacency where we just do nothing. We're like, oh great, you know, solar flare is coming. I'm going to sit back and relax until that happens and then the whole world will awaken. And if you experienced and were alive in 2012, you realize that things don't quite work that way. It is up to us to fully develop and to fully decide in this moment and then take action in accordance with that in every thought, feeling, and belief towards the reality that we want. So that's the only way that this awakening is really going to fully happen to the degree that we want it to happen. And with the least amount of repercussions on the physical level of destruction as possible. We can also hold on to these ideas because we might be afraid or we might, you know, not know this unknown, this mystery as to what's going to happen. And so we might not know what's going to happen to the earth and is it going to change? Where are all these billions of people going to go? And like, are they supposed to stay or are they not? Is everyone going to ascend? These questions are happening. And in that space, 
we can often want to buy into a certain idea of something that's going to happen in the future to just make us feel good and to make sure that we're you know, on the right track. But we are the only determinants of if we're on the right track. So now I want to get into a few stories that are really dear to my heart and really, I guess, vulnerable um, to some of my experiences and memories that I've had in Atlantis um, and these recalls that I've had to kind of quell this fear of the unknown and to really kind of face it head on with clarity and consciousness and awareness so that we can navigate particularly these waters right now to not repeat things and not hide out in certain you know things that we think are going to happen so that we can feel better right now. So I've had two massive remembrances of my time in Atlantis. One was when I was swimming over the Bimini Road there in the Bahamas. It was immense and I have a video and a blog about that and I'll put that here if you want to go watch that. One of the ones that's more relevant is this idea of catastrophe, this the catastrophe wound. I don't know if you guys have had the dreams of the tidal wave, the huge tsunamis coming, whether it's to the east coast or the west coast, but I think it, now it was like 10 years ago or something I had that dream when I was living in Los Angeles of it being overtaken by the west Co on the west coast and then FEMA camps and that kind of reality. I have not had that kind of dream ever since. And we have those dreams again to remind us, you know, are we going to do this again? And it's also this deep destructive catastrophe um, cell memory, not only from, from Atlantis, but from Maldek. You know, there's, we have this like in our DNA is like, ah, are we gonna destroy ourselves? And, and it's very important again to insert this positivity so that it doesn't have to happen again. But the other point is that death is okay. Death is a natural part of the cycle and everything long term will balance itself out and come to this place of oneness and clarity and balance. So this is what I came to when I was on my adventures in Scotland by myself last year. And I get called to these places and I'm not sure why, but in the, at this particular time, I went to this amazing mountain in the Isle of Skye, which is gosh, remote, you know, far away land that is super Lord of the Rings style with misty mountains and rain and wonder. And so I'm climbing these, this mountain and just feeling the energy and the vibrancy and the wild frequencies. And as I got to the top and was meditating there, I felt this overwhelming sensation of a huge wave coming and overtaking me. And I remembered this time where I was a man and this wave overtook me there and actually at that place. And it was so deep and rich and it actually wasn't scary because in some way I knew that it was coming. And one of the things that was this preliminary um, weaving into this experience was my my journeys through the stone circles there. And I went and had the pleasure of getting to sit with many standing stones and many stone circles um, in Scotland and Ireland and England, um, but particularly there in Scotland, they were just outside every Airbnb, like I couldn't escape them. And I didn't want to because one of the memories again is that I helped plant some of these. Like I, I saw the stone and I would just cry because I would remember it and it would remember me. And it was incredibly powerful and so, so beautiful. And as I sat in circle after circle after circle, one of the things that came through from the stones was, hello again, you know, and we're still here, and we're still here. And the idea that time after time, like epoch after epoch, you know, civilization after civilization, those stones are still standing strong. They're still anchored through time. They are timeless. They are eternal. And it's not just the physical form, which it is too, you know, I mean, these, these stones have been around for a long time, but that reflection to us as the creators of these stone circles, as one of the markers and symbols um, to us as humans through time and to us as aliens on different planets, you know, there's like so many different kinds of structures on other planets also as this reminder. And this reminder that we are that immovable, eternal stone ourselves, 
that we are solid in that space and that no matter what happens, if we die, if there is destruction, like we'll just come back and it's okay and we'll be here again and we'll have more wisdom and we'll experience it again. And so it's this, this constant kind of bigger scale understanding of the world and, and, and time and destruction. And in that space, there isn't fear of, of death and fear of mortality of this particular life and understanding it from a bigger scale that like, say I've been working on this, you know, for hundreds of thousands, maybe millions of years and, and it's okay. And just one step at a time, that perspective really helped me to understand um, death and to, and to be okay with destruction and honestly be okay with catastrophe. And in that space, I'm not hiding from it. I'm not running from it, which means I'm not creating it because when we're hiding and running from it, we're actually generating more of that reality. And so in evidence of that, you know, like moving to Hawaii and people said, well, what about if the ring of fire and what about if the tsunamis? And I'm going, if I feel the call, I know I'll be in the right place for whatever that experience has for me. I'm not going like to set myself up to die by any means, but it's more so if I feel that call, I know that I'm meant to be there as an anchor point, as a pillar of light to help balance energies. And I'm okay with that. And if I get the call away, then I'm meant to not be there. So this idea of moving with trust and with knowing from this deep, deep uh, space is is profoundly uh, effective for me um, and profoundly moving and profoundly um, aligned with, with who I am. And so this is part of the transmission that I just wanted to deliver to you as we enter into certain times of certain possibilities, cer certain probabilities of things happening, whether it's solar flares or this or that and to anchor to your own self and to tune into what that is and to not be afraid, but also with, with that fearlessness to step into what you actually want the world to be, to not you know look at it as like this illusionary thing that doesn't matter, but actually to have it fuel you to, uh, to create more and to be more for this world and be more for humanity and be more for earth. So, this is what I find is significant and keeps us in line and doesn't let us sway to new ideas coming out that might not be accurate to us or might be totally resonant. It just depends on what we're feeling. So it's a powerful time and actually the fall of Atlantis is uh, energetically demarcated as um, Halloween, which is the day before the fall of Atlantis, which is a very interesting thing. And so it, it feels like it's coming up for me to share about this right now because of that particular timing. So as you feel and go through kind of like the veil death cycle of, of Halloween and this time of going inward, also feel into your mortality and feel into your infinity and see where you anchor as a piece of this eternal, incredible stone circle of humanity that we're a part of. So that's what I wanted to share today, and I really appreciate you watching. Comment below if you've had any experiences of this or have any questions around this. Um, be sure to like and subscribe, and I'll be back next week with another video. And I'm going to start, I think, posting videos on Tuesdays because I was posting them on Sundays, but then I, I never had a weekend. So I'm going to start posting more consistently on Tuesdays and I will definitely have videos for the next few months at least every Tuesday. So be sure to come back and tune in then. I really appreciate you watching and I'll see you next time.